Cyril Khan has become one of the most fascinating characters in Andor. When the Empire took over on Ferex, Cyril and the Primors were sent home. He returned to his mother on Coruscant, and the next day over breakfast, she says that she's going to call in a favour to a certain Uncle Harlow, who's going to help Cyril get a job. Fast forward to Episode 7, Announcement, and Cyril is preparing for his first day at this job, at the Bureau of Standards. Cyril's mother, Edie, goes on a spiel about first impressions, and why it's important to take one's appearance seriously. After all to her mind, every little detail says something. She then mentions Uncle Hollow again, who facilitated Cyril getting Imperial employment, this time saying that Uncle Hollow's influence is not something to be trifled with. When Cyril gets to the job and is shown the ropes before being assigned to fuel purity, the supervisor apologises that Cyril's uncle couldn't be there, he was too busy, and this got a lot of fans wondering why the show is not showing us this mysterious uncle. If he's just an ordinary Imperial, why not introduce him to the audience? That might still be to come, but some folks believe it's because Uncle Harlow is a very important character. Some even believe that he could be an Imperial we've already met in the original trilogy, and that his cameo will be special. Personally, I think while we will meet Harlow at some stage, I don't think his physical presence matters right now. This part of the story is all about Cyril himself, and the journey he will go on that will eventually lead him to join the ISB and cross paths with Dedra Miro, as teased by the actors. If we're being real here, Uncle Harlow is probably just some random guy, an arrogant imperial of high repute, but if it does happen to be someone we know, then that would certainly be a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. But not everyone in the galaxy far far away has to be related. I've seen some fan theories that it might be Palpatine, and while that would certainly be quite a plot twist, I don't think Granddaddy Palps has any surviving family at this stage. At least not ones he kept in contact with from Naboo, let alone have them live in a meek apartment on Coruscant, but who knows? As I say, the logical reason we've not been introduced to Uncle Hollow yet is because his presence doesn't serve the plot as much as Cyril's character arc in this show. What I do find super interesting about Cyril more broadly though, is how the series is making us sympathise for him as an Imperial. And the same goes for Dedra. They've humanised these characters who've been through so much and have a lot of pressure in their everyday lives from external factors and people. I want to break this down a little bit from Cyril's point of view. When he arrives at his mother's place in episode 4, Edie slaps him across the face before hugging him and bringing him inside. From that moment alone, audiences could tell there was something strained about their relationship. There was a toxicity there. Though Cyril towers over his mother physically, audience discovered in the next episode, episode 5, that it's Edie who towers over her son emotionally, and from her small stature, she bulldozes over him with ease, manipulating him with her words and giving him very little room to respond or even fight for himself, he looks physically and emotionally drained. In her first lines in episode 5, she tells him off for slouching at the table and even equates his posture to projecting disappointment to everyone he meets, instead of trusting her son to be an adult and find his own way in the world. So she goes ahead and places a call to Uncle Hollow so that he could find Cyril a new job. To add insult to injury, Cyril overhears part of the conversation, at least on his mother's side. Cyril's frustration with his mother is very thinly veiled, but he never lashes out. His words towards her are clipped and controlled because he's had years of practice interacting with her in this way. And I'm sure plenty of audience members can relate to that kind of relationship. And through her unsolicited opinions, Cyril's mother holds all the power in their family dynamic. Now we don't know what happened to Cyril's father and if he was ever in the picture or not. Edie may have raised Cyril on her own. As I said before, we don't know who Uncle Hollow is, what his vocation was, or what type of connections he has with the Empire, we just know he's of high repute. What we do know is that Cyril is broken in some ways, how could he not be with a mother like that? She undermines him, doesn't trust him in any way, not even to pour his own cereal. But to go back to a point I touched on earlier, they don't exactly live in a nice part of Coruscant. She lives further down beneath the impressive structures of an urban planet. It's not exactly 1313, but it's not exactly on the level of Mon Mothma's apartment either. But the only reason I bring this up is that Cyril's mother does not have the status and repute that she expects Cyril to have at his age. The scenes between Cyril and his mother are enough information to capture an entire childhood and adolescence, an overly critical and overbearing mother, and as a result, a lonely man who's now grown up with plenty of unresolved emotional issues. Cyril feels alone and is down on his luck, yet despite the barrage of remarks, he still wants his mother's approval. And at one point during the conversation, Cyril's mother laments that she didn't get to see Cyril when he was flourishing, and he even says she had the opportunity to do so but she didn't. And of course, when Cyril challenges her, she deflects that an open invitation is no invitation at all. 
Cyril pushes back to say that he had a spare room for her, and again, ED pivots, choosing to focus on the fact that he doesn't have a job, and once again undermine her son. If he didn't care about his mother's support, Cyril wouldn't have brought this up, and he wouldn't have shown up at her doorstep. But seeing Cyril's interactions with his mother changes our perspective on the former Primor. He's a goody two-shoe stickler for the rules, but episodes 4, 5, and 7 have shown us why he is the way he is. In many ways, as a Primor, he was in his element, and from one perspective, it could have been a means of escaping her, having his own apartment, doing his own thing. Going forward, now that he's in a new job and his story is going to cross paths with other characters, it'll be fascinating to see where his story goes from here. Share your thoughts in the comments down below guys, if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you always. Who do you think Uncle Harlow is? <laughs> and why haven't we seen him yet? I made the joke on Discord it was Jack Harlow, but I'm, I know that one's a little over your head. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, Uncle Harlow, though, I I saw you kind of brought up that it could be the Emperor or like just, you know, n not that it could be, but just it would be funny if it was. It'd be funny if Harlow was like his family nickname. <laughs> She's Harlow Palpatine. <laughs> it's Uncle Harlow. Well, the reason I, I kind of put that forward, kind of tongue-in-cheek, I don't really think it is the Emperor, but as a theory, it's kind of the way that Cyril's mother said that he's of, like, such high repute within the Empire, and kind of, like, his time is an asset, he doesn't really have much time to deal with people, and it's kind of how Palpatine was described before Ezra met him in Rebel yeah. Season 4. Yeah, yeah. You know, she does have kind of the similar a similar voice to Palpatine too. You know, with the the graspy voice, zero. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're you're right though. Um, he does seem to have a higher position in the Empire, or maybe within the politics of the Empire. So, do we think he's just a guy then, if he's not Palpatine, or someone? Um, who knows? Well, I, so you kind of made me starting to think about it during the stream here, and it could be, you know, a politician, maybe someone, how funny would it be if, like, you know, maybe it's like a, more of a god, a godparent kind of a thing, than a, like, they call him an uncle, but it's not really an uncle, and what if it's the vizier? <laughs> you think Masamita? Yeah, Harlow Masamita. Oh, so, like, uncle is just, like, a, a casual honorific yeah or like you know like an I, don't, I don't know though a, a, a politician someone that works within the higher ups like maybe someone that's kind of on the same level as a mon mothma i'm not sure i do think we'll see masamida but i don't think he's uncle hollow i mean hollow is a better name than mass but <laughs> you got that right <laughs> He'll probably just be some guy, but I do think it's quite fascinating we've not seen him. And they've been talking about him, so yeah, maybe he'll but... be the one to put Cyril in contact with Dedra or Yeah, De Deidre is definitely onto it too. <laughs>